Hello, welcome, welcome to this March sunny day, beautiful day out, but we're inside playing some league games. Heck yeah. How do you think that draft went, Turtle? Um, let me have it load up real quick as we're loading on into game here. Okay, um, okay. Looking at the draft, um, we did get a lot of the things we were looking for. We wanted to get a more defensive comp. They gave us the Seraphine, which is one of our best picks overall. Like when we get the Seraphine, it's a very good game for us. So we were able to get that early on in the draft, and their counters to our stuff is a little mixed. It looks like they're going to be trying to look for a lot of 4v4 fights with having a split pushing with the Jacks, but we always have that Shenar so he can join in whenever he needs to. So we will have advantage in those mid to late game fights. And we have a very strong bot lane with that Caitlyn um, Leona into that Tristana Thresh. Thresh does counter the Leona, but I do think how Caitlyn, the Tristana interact in lane, I do think it should be us favored early. So we should see a lot of action in that bot lane. Yeah, I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out, uh, especially given the um, high stakes that are here in this game. Uh, SSU is on their com uncomfortable picks for them. We've got that Shen in the top lane, as you said, that Seraphine in the mid lane there. So we know for a fact that we've got two laners who are at least on very strong, comfortable picks. We also know that our ADC is also very comfortable uh, on the Take Caitlyn five. as well. And uh, Godzilla is very familiar with that. Now, Leona. So we should be seeing some very high tier plays coming out from SSU because they're all sitting on top of champions that they are very, very comfortable. Um, so, also the game today, sorry, I forgot to announce it, it's SSU versus the SCU Broncos. If you don't see that in chat, I'll just note that there. Uh, so, the Broncos versus the Bears today. So, we'll see who's better, the horse or a bear. <laughs> yeah, let's say if the Bears are going to be able to maul this Bronco. And as we can see, Jeremy is starting on a top lane, so he is looking to prio into that bot lane. And while the Hecarim is looking to prio into that top lane. So we could see an early dragon take potentially because of how the pathians are going to be set up and how they're going to end up being played out. It could be interesting too because Hecarim could also opt for a full clear of his jungle as well, look for an early cheater back, and then try to get back on the map as soon as he can so he can rush that level 6 as soon as he can so he can, uh, of course, try to uh, gank very heavily uh, uh, after his level 6. Um, I think as we're looking into this bot lane matchup, I think that's going to be the most um, impactful matchup in this early because I feel like top lane Shen will be out the jacks for like the first like seven ish levels. It's really going to be on the jacks first back before he can start coming back into the Shen. So he's going to have small prio in that top lane, but I don't think anything's going to get done with that. It's more just see if ja um, Shen can build up any CS lead so he can get good items for his first ultimate around seven ish minutes. Yeah, and, and I think it's going to come down to uh, Jax just looking to split push most of this game because Arctic Wolf does like to tend to play uh, more for the team and trying to get those uh, team plays off with his ultimate and having that TP. So he if he can just look for good ultimates and a TP back to top lane, he should be able to hold his own against this Jax while also uh, basically changing the tides of battle across the map without ever having to uh, lose too much in the top lane here. Yeah, and actually, I love what Humble's doing here. He's actually got a nice shove in, and he's going for a cheater recall. Let's see, I'm pretty sure he should be picking up his tier of... Oh, wait, oh, never mind, he canceled it. As Leon's are going in on the bot lane. 
Uh, Leona's going in here on the bot lane. We got the bomb going off on top of the Leona, and unfortunately not going to get the kill, and it's going to force a Tristana to flash. So that is the ADC flash down for the Broncos. Uh, and so SSU is probably going to be calling that out and is going to look to abuse that here uh, with another force gank in the bot lane. Um, as you can see, Hecarim has cleared one more camp than Jarvan at this point in time, and they're both sitting on Scuttle. So Hecarim will be coming out of this jungle a little bit ahead of the Jarvan, uh, but of course Jarvan's going to clear his chickens right now because he didn't want to prioritize an early gank, uh, which it looks like Hecarim isn't going to be able to get, so he's just going to back off and go ahead and take his Krugs and go for a full clear. Yeah, and as we see, Seraphine's most likely going to look for a recall here, but she is recalling a little high, or he might try to stop her. But she is Oom, and yeah, Ori's just going to throw the ball out. And um, both mid laners are actually very low on mana right now. And they can't show the wave in, so it's going to be probably very awkward. We might not see any reaction as they're getting a nice poke down in that bot lane. Oh, a nice up coming mid. out from the Thresh hook. Bomb going out on this Caitlyn. Caitlyn being forced to back off. Uh, failed auto going out of Leona instead of the Caitlyn. Not going to get that fourth bomb shot off as early. And it looks like this skirmish is just going to uh, fizzle out here. Uh, some nice chunk trade damage coming out on the bot lane, but unfortunately it looks like Tristana took a lot more than that. And um, knowing that Tristana wants to jump in, it wants to engage here, especially with this Hecarim uh, being low in these situations, it's not good for her, especially with how quickly she can be CC'd by the Leona and then poked out by the Caitlyn. I think SSU really needs that. They're going to go look for a base recall. They need to look to base really soon because Jeremy is going to be on that bot path down. So if they can get the base off before the Broncos bot lane, they could try to turn that into this first dragon that is coming up here because Jeremy got his first back off. He's got a nice top to bot side clear going. So he, they could try to look this early take on this drag because the Hecarim is going to be on that opposite side of the map. Yeah, it'll be very interesting. I'm hoping that they are going to be looking for this early drag because this early drag pressure is going to be very, very important for SSU to have. Um, and with this Mountain Drake coming in here so early, that's going to give an easy and quick buff to the three major front lines that are on uh, SSU's team. The Jarvan, the Shen, and the Leona. It's just going to give them plenty of resistance to be able to hit those dives and be able to peel for their ADCs. Um, that's it, It's going to make it very difficult for um, Broncos to be able to um, fight back on that. Looks like they're pinging the bot lane here. It looks like Hecarim sitting in the bot looking for an engage. Mitch is going to sidestep the Q there. Uh, just going to be able to stay alive. Uh, looks like they're still trying to bait this here. Looking to put, play a little bit more aggressive on Caitlyn. Caitlyn does not have any mana here. Uh, and Tristana does have a full mana bar. So they could potentially look for a hard engage here. Um, but it looks like SSU is reading that, and with the extra pressure they have mid lane, they're now pushing down. As you said, it looks like they are going to Humble be might overextend here, actually, in the deep in that jungle. Yeah, it looks like Humble's here extended in this jungle. He has the Blast Plant coming out. J4 is there. They're going to get the nice root off onto the Orianna. Not quite going to be able to get it. Uh, going to be forcing the Flash out on the Humble there across the wall to get away from the Orianna and uh, Hecarim. Uh, definitely an unnecessary Flash. He tried to push for something that just wasn't there. Um, and then pass the wrong direction to mid lane instead of back to the the river brush uh, but that's okay he got his flash and hopefully as long as he can play safe for the next five minutes he should be okay uh from any ganks that hecker might uh try to get off here uh but we'll see it looks like ssu is making a play for this dragon here um they're taking the pressure that they got in the mid lane and the uh, bot lane and so they're now just rotating here to get that pressure uh while Jax, of course tries to trade as best uh as he can with the shen in the top lane yeah, and you can start seeing those small CS leads building up for the lanes that are taking advantage. Shen did get his nice early back off piece, and he is giving some CS over to the um, Jax. Actually, they're going to go for a nice blue buff steal, deny that mana from the Orianna, give it over. As they're actually looking for the Threshers caught out. Ooh, looking for a kill on the Thresh here. Going to be able to get that secured, and first blood goes to Mitch Fortune. That's a nice 400 gold right to the ADC for SSU. Yeah, and... Um, because Thresh did that, they're actually going to be able to shove in this bot lane. So Trist wave, she was trying to hold it from that tower and have a nice freeze for her. They're going to push that under and try to get the lane back into a neutral state. I actually think that's a blunder because I actually think the wave would have actually came into SSU. And now Mitch is going to have probably a very awkward back timer because now that they he did that get that kill. And they're trying to force a shove here off the two resets of um, the Broncos bot lane. Yeah, and I don't think Trist is going to be looking for anything here. They are 2v2. Oh, it looks looking like for a dive in the top lane. Dive here in the top lane. Uh, Hecarim does have his ultimate here, is going to ult and miss Arctic Wolf. Arctic Wolf is going to dash through him and be able to flash away and survive. See, so he is going to survive that dive there. Uh, and I think that's actually much bigger for um, SSU in this case because 
that Shen was able to survive a dive, and yeah, he only burnt Flash, but that's a Hecarim ultimate down. So that means SSU can fight a, uh, can force a fight anywhere across the map uh, while this Hecarim's ultimate is down. And because he doesn't have that ult, he's not going to be very impactful in these upcoming team fights here. Yeah, and also with that, Hecarim's first ult is one of the biggest ults in the game. He's like Rengar in that sense, is that you want to have that first ult be impactful. You want to get something for it. And instead, he kind of loses a lot of pressure in time because of that failed dive in the top lane. And the Shen was way too high X, um, HP with the fact that he has um, that steel cap on top of that, that he, they just should not have went for that dive and set their own Hecarim behind. Yeah, and it looks as though the Hecarim is going to be going for the uh, Chemtech build. He's got two Ruby Crystals right now and uh, Boots of Lucidity. So he's he looks like he's going for that CDR, just tankiness, just going to look to dive the enemy uh, and stay alive. They not really over too much damage. River if they, oh, they're, okay, they're not going to look to collapse on, but I think they actually could have gotten a free kill on that Flash of Seraphine. Yeah, I, just to that out. I don't know if they would have saw him because I think that Ori dropped the the ward in that river brush a little late, so they saw the Seraphine roaming. But I don't know if they wanted to catch that, especially with Hecarim not having his ultimate, and Seraphine does have her ultimate are in a, just a couple seconds here. Uh, so that means they probably didn't know if she had her ultimate or not. Uh, their, so their better their best bet was just to probably play it safe and not look for a forced engage there, especially with the um, Shen having his ultimate up as well. Yeah, and I think SSU needs to watch at top side of the map because the airplane wings are actually looking to set up a looking dive. Looking dive the here. They're going to get a dive off onto that Tristana, looking for the more dive. Uh, J4 ulti going to come out, going to get them tanking out from the Leona. They are going to continue this dive here, looking to get that Thresh. Thresh burn with that red smite coming out. Uh, Jeremy looking to follow here, going to get the EQ combo and is going to be able to secure a double kill for SSU here on a nice clean dive. That's really good for SSU because it denies Tristana about a wave, a wave and a half went into the void and hopefully Jeremy does take the time and counter jungle and they're actually going to deny the cannon wave that is coming into this tower because they're going to zone Tristana off just for a little bit but now they're going to safely back off. Yeah, Godzilla Flip was thinking about going back through the tower there but decided they're just going to walk through the river, uh, the tribrush here and going to get some vision control in this outside jungle. Hecarim looking for another ultimate in the top lane, not quite going to find it on the Deshen as he just dashes right through. Yeah, and Broncos are going to slowly keep falling behind as they keep kind of wasting their Hecarim ult almost because the Jax has a nice slow push building into that tower and Hecarim could have taken more camps. He could have farmed his own camps that are all respawned and had been sitting on the map for a while. And he kind of is just losing pressure because now Dragon is up in about 50 seconds now and Hecarim ult might be down for the first 10 seconds so SSU could find a window to find the early pressure onto that dragon. Yeah, And they definitely do have that early pressure because they can force a Shen, they can easily force that dragon pressure with the Shen ultimate now that they have that up. Uh, they can easily get a quick five man gather in the bot side and that would force Jax to TP in the bot side here and if Jax does get that force TP off, that means Arctic Wolf will have, that means uh, the Shen top lane will have the TP advantage in any other uh, fights. That means Means especially in Rift uh, in this case because Rift will be coming up eventually and SSU will want to prioritize that almost immediately after they have Dragon. Yeah and actually we're going to look up into that top lane. Um, the Jax does have a very nice freeze right now down on the Shen and he's slowly expanding the CS lead greatly. That Jax is actually kind of in a way a ticking time bomb right now because he's denying Shen a bunch of XP and gold, and he's getting it all for himself as he's looking for a trade onto the Shen here. Just gonna keep on eating out, and that's kind of been the state the top lane's been in for a while, because yeah. Shen can't go in on the Jax, Jax can't truly just go in on, on the Shen, but he is slowly building this lead and is going to become problematic. You can tell that the Shen is very comfortable in this matchup, and even though it is a little bit, as you said, advantage ad advantageous for the Jax uh, in the later game, uh, the Shen knows, Arctic Wolf knows how to play this champion in this early game here. He knows how to just stagnate the lane and just take those small trades when he can get them, and, and of course tank damage with his shields whenever it's up, and he's playing this as a true Shen one, or as a true Shen player would know how to play. And he is doing an amazing job at that. SSU does have the start on this dragon here as they were able to secure it because the Broncos did not want to contest into this RA Moonstone completed on that Seraphine. And because of the 
small um, gold lead that is in that bot lane right now because of the first blood and the kills as Humble might get caught here in the mid lane. Nice flash. Humble's not caught. Gonna get an ult off. Gonna hit two members of Broncos here. Broncos gonna be looking to get out. Gonna be able to secure a kill onto the Oriana. Oriana's gonna fall here. They're looking for another kill onto the Hecarim. Gonna be chasing it down. Not quite. The pony is just too fast. Yeah, and that was a really good flash and ult combo as Jeremy's actually looking oh, to go. Oh, Jeremy is going to continue following this here. Ultimate going to come in from Caitlyn. Going to be a quick pickup on the kill and a free blue buff for SSU. Yeah, that's denying even more pressure. This Oriana is starting to lose in this mid lane matchup because the Seraphine does outrange her, can't keep her distance, and they're just punishing the fact of the matter. I feel like this Hecarim is playing way too aggro. They might look for a bot dive. They're just going to call me back off. Godzilla looking for a dive here. Going to get the slow off onto the Thresh. Thresh going to flay him away. Jeremy coming in to get him. Going to get ulted away by the Tristana, but not quite going to get out. The Shen is going to be able to secure the kill onto the Thresh with the dash. And now that Shen, uh, now you have this Jack pushing on the opposite side of the map, but as we said, the Shen was able to join his team, make a huge impact across the map, and now that he has TP, he's going to be able to TP right back to lane and match that Jax. Yeah, and the, also, just I wanted to point out too, is that early Rift Herald that was picked up on the sides of the Broncos is really not going to um, come to anything. They're not going to get any free play, so they're actually lost so much value because they spent time getting that Herald. And they didn't even get first tower. That was actually going in the favor of bot lane. So now they're going to be able to start rotating this Caitlyn around on the map. Start pressuring these other outer towers. And that's what you want to be looking to do with your Tristana. That's what Tristana wants to do. She wants to move around the map. Looks like they could try to actually take this top tower with the Rift Herald charge. But it looks like Jax is going to play it safe since SSU's bot lane is currently out of sight and off the map. Yeah, and it looks like right now they've got Caitlyn in the back. They've got Caitlyn in the base right now uh, with Leona roaming here in the top lane looking for something. Uh, I don't know if they want to take this engage here. They have Leona and the Shen in the top lane, uh, but it looks like the Broncos do have more uh, more advantage right now uh, on a rotation if that was to happen. Uh, it looks like Caitlyn just sat in base and waited for an item. It looks like she did officially get her Gale Force, and so she is now going to be able to execute and dash and dodge around abilities. In these team fights here okay and and there is a four and a half k gold lead in the favor of ssu right now so i just want to take a second to tell where that gold is at currently in that jungle there's a 1400 gold lead actually wait i might have to stall because there looks like there could be engagement in this top lane as jake yeah, looks is like there is a fight out. they've got two members here and it looks like godzilla flip is going to be all alone here going to get ulted on by the hecarim but is going to flash out and is going to be safe away once again hecarim ulti going to be forcing a flash but not going to be able to secure any kills so now they're going to have this ultimate down here and ssu is pinging this they know that the they know that the hecarim doesn't have their ulti here so they're looking to try to pressure somewhere They've got the Caitlyn coming top lane, so they're now doing a bot top swap, and so they can get they start getting top side pressure for this Rift Herald here. Yeah, Interestana did a good thing. She crashed in that bot lane real quick, got a nice push back, um, re-engage on the wave, so she's going to be able to CS nicely to try to come back in this game. Actually, they're going to look Leona going Jack on to the Jax here. Going to get the nice chain CC down. Caitlyn just looking to kite away. Jax not going to be able to get out as the Caitlyn ultimate is going to be able to finish him off. And Bronco's top laner gets a little bit too aggressive as he gives another kill over to this um, Mitch Fortune on this Caitlyn right now. He has a 2k gold lead over the, his opponent in that bot lane. And I'm going to look across the map. There's a 1500 gold lead in the mid lane for the Humble Gamer. And there's a 1500 gold lead in the jungle for Jair Bear. But on the side of the Broncos, they do have that Jax who has a 1k gold. He has Humble is getting engaged on Humble is getting engaged on here. The uh, ultimate's going to be coming up. Humble not going to be able to hit his ultimate here as Shen is going to come in. Shen not going to want to fight this, so he's going to just dash over the wall and try to get out here. Uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to save the Seraphine because the Seraphine ult did not land. That was a good catch by the Broncos there on that Seraphine. Uh, but now they're going to have to back. Now they're going to have to be careful here because SSU is looking for a re-engage. They have the Caitlyn. They have the... Uh, the J4 and the Leona sitting on the top side of the map here with drag coming up soon in about 40 seconds. It looks like SSU is not going to be able to contest this with their ADC top lane and their, uh, their they do have their mid laner coming up in 10 seconds though. With their mid laner coming up in 10 seconds, they could potentially rush it down to the dragon and hopefully contest this. But SSU is sitting in a good spot right now where if, if Broncos do take a dragon, SSU is not too worried about it. They can look to pressure other sides of the map. Yeah, um, in the Broncos, they are going to look to contest this dragon here, but I don't think they really can because if you look at that Seraphine, she does have the Moonstaff built up right now. She's got both those really nice items, give out um, movement speed, give out um, extra heals, and just make people very quickly be able to navigate these fights. And also, 
the Ori is toppling with TP, but it does look like her R is going to be down for the next 10 seconds or so. So SSU is looking to just burst this dragon down. Yeah, SSU is looking at TP going to come in from Oriana. Oriana is about to have her ultimate, so she's waiting for this ultimate to come up here. Uh, there's only two ultimates. There's a Hecarim ultimate and a coming out. Hecarim ultimate going to hit that back line on the Caitlyn. Caitlyn going to be stunned out by the Jax who came in from behind. Going to get the shutdown gold onto Jax. Now they're looking to disengage here. SSU is trying their best to disengage. Arctic Wolf in the back line trying to look for that kill onto the Tristana. Not quite going to find it. Jeremy just kiting away from the kiting away from the Hecarim. Not going to be able to find the kill. Triumph going to be killed, uh, keeping a Hecarim alive. And it looks like the Broncos are going to be able to come out on top on that team fight, and they're going to be able to secure them a dragon and get them back in this game. It looks like they're actually going to get a nice, complete ace onto SSU, picking up all those shutdowns that were on their side. It's swinging that gold lead that was so much in favor of SSU. It was about a 5k gold lead, and now that's shrunk to only about two. And I think SSU was just way too greedy on the engage. They had the free dragon, Ori was TPing, and they got it down to like 1500 HP, and they opted to turn into the Broncos, who really were just waiting for them to walk into them. And they weren't very coordinated, and they were very disjointed. It allowed that Caitlyn to get one shot, one of their main damage sources right now. And I yeah. think it was just a little greedy on their behalf, trying to go for that turn without finishing that dragon. Absolutely. SSU definitely should have either focused the dragon and finished it or went full force for a turn. Uh, but they decided to kind of, they, they were a bit confused on that engage. And what ended up happening is because they were confused, they went for the dive. That left Caitlyn wide open to completely be dove by two members of the Broncos there. And as I, as we said before, the Hecarim ulti is going to be a very big game changer in these team fights here. And if he can get on top of the, if he can get on top of that Caitlyn every single time with that ultimate, uh, she's going to have a tough time being able to DPS or stay in these team fights um, with the Jax Hecra being able to dive her in the back line. So SSU is going to really have to prioritize peeling for this Caitlyn in the back so that she can stay alive as, as long as possible uh, and dish out as much damage. You also have the Seraphine who can peel as well, but her peel just isn't as strong uh, as potentially what a Shen or a Leona could provide. Yeah, I think um, Disco accidentally overextended there, not peeling for his Caitlyn there. Um, and if you actually look, like I, we were talking about in the beginning stages of this game, that Jax, which they needed to try to put pressure onto that soul like they were doing, because they could have had a very nice and early soul point, but now that's going to be delayed, they might not get it in time, and now this Jax is going to be problematic in that split push. Like, as you can see right here, they're trying to push into the Jax, they have to send two members because neither of them can walk up on this Jax because of how ahead he is. Yeah, and SSU is using this rift here that they had uh, they had achieved from the top lane when they had that push. The hook coming out on the J4. J4 going to get a bomb on top of him, not quite going to get anything. Uh, the Broncos are going to get knocked back. It looks like Hecarim is looking for an engage here. Ori flashing over the wall, looking for a ball onto them. Leona going to be forced to ult away. Shen ulti going to be coming in. Leona going back on the engage. Shen ulti, a huge J4 ulti coming out of three members of the Broncos as they're going in. Oriana ult is a counter as well. Jax coming in the back line, going onto the uh, Caitlyn. Caitlyn going to be kiting away from the Jax. Ultimate going to be coming out from Seraphine, going to keep her alive. And SSU is going to be getting four man kill, and that's going to be barren for SSU. Yeah, and SSU was actually did very good waiting and holding their abilities to find the proper turnaround. Jeremy didn't instantly pop his R. Disco didn't instantly pop his R. They used it to get by time for that Shen to get in with his ultimate and find a proper turnaround. And with that, they secure a Baron, which is going to start nullifying the comeback that the Broncos were going to able to perform. And the Broncos, for some reason, decided to pull the trigger when they really didn't need to. They had the time scaling. They have scaling on their side of their team that they could have been waiting for, but they decided to pull the trigger and give SSU a lot more gold back into their kit. Now you can see Mitch has completed the Lord Doms. He's going to be able to start shredding through this Hecarim, and everyone's going to be start be able to do a lot more damage and look to get this dragon in a minute 30. Yeah, and with Caitlyn having five kills and the Shen also having three kills, that means you're going to have a tanky front line that's going to be able to keep this Caitlyn alive even more so. Uh, and I, I, that that last team fight was just an exemplary, uh, an exemplary and a, and a very good job by SSU utilizing the strengths of their composition here uh, with that Leona Shen being able to basically hand deliver two members right to the back line with an easy J4 follow up. Uh, and Seraphine even held her ultimate this time because she knew that her teammates were being able to CC. So she held her ultimate just long enough so that she could peel for the ADC. And if she's able to do that every single time in these team fights, that Caitlyn is going to be very hard to be able to kill in these uh, kill in this late game because their Broncos are going to have a very tough time getting to her. 
Yeah, um, the Shen needs to actually leave here so they can start pressuring multiple lanes with this Baron so they can start rotating. Because if Shen was in that bot lane right now, they could potentially rotate to take that next outer turret, get more gold. They need to start pressuring because um, as um, Broncos, they don't mind sitting here just trading like um, farm back and forth. But SSU is missing a lot of gold on the map. You have Jax. You do, I do want to note here real quick that you have Jax sitting at the top side. Red buff, he's not CSing, he's not farming, and he's not pushing lanes. He was just sitting in that bush for a long period of time. And now he's going to take Scuttle Crab, but he, because he sat there for so long, he lost a lot of pressure that he probably could have gotten top lane. He knew that all five members of SSU were in the mid lane. He could have easily taken a, a wave or two in the top lane and gotten some damage off on that top tower before SSU was able to back off. And especially with Dragon coming up, trying to get that pressure on the top side is very important. See, now he's getting this pressure a little too late and the Dragon's up, and so that's a free Dragon for SSU. And now they're, now they're on the Dragon point. They're going to be contesting for Soul here in the next four in the next five minutes it seems like both teams are a little bit lost right now they don't know where they're going but ssu is going to take their bear into pressure as they're for a dive here onto the oriana oriana ultimate going to be coming off leona going to get the nice uh stun root down on her e i forget that her e's a root not a stun uh and so she is going to be able to secure a nice kill onto the oriana and so ssu is going to be using this baron to just crack these bottom towers here and hopefully get an in him they're going to be able to get the in him now because Broncos can't look to fight without that big team fighting ultimate they have in that Oriana. The Oriana has a lot of damage right now. And not having her here, they can't really capitalize. The Hecarim can get a good engage, but he's not going to have that extra oomph with that ball that would also have been on top of him. So they get a nice inhib as they go to look to back and probably go to pressure the top side of the map now. As they're going to yep. take the jungle camps as they leave, which I think is a very good thing to keep gold out of the hands of the Broncos. Yeah, and a lot of times too, you'll see teams, uh, especially, forget that you ha taking gold away from the enemy to be able to have a comeback is a very important thing to do. Uh, and and knowing that SSU is being able to take these dragons here, take these buffs, and hand them over to people like Seraphine and keep a blue buff up on their own side or a red buff up for their own carries is going to be very very important because you can spread those buffs around the team and take that lead you already had and just completely. Uh, spread that lead and make it much di more difficult for the Broncos. Yeah, and I just want to take a time as the game has calmed down a little bit to point out the gold lead. There is a about 5k, no, or a 6k gold lead. No, it's a 5k, I was right. Gold lead right now. And most of that gold lead is about 1,000 in the mid lane in the favor of Humble. There's a about 1,500 gold lead in the jungle for the Jarvan and the astounding 3k gold lead right now over this Tristana. The 80 carries are so like gapped in gold right now that this Tristana can't compete with the DPS of the Caitlyn because of the amount of items she just has over this Tristana. And it's starting to show in these fights. You can see this Tristana hitting away at the front line, but Caitlyn is just taking down the front line even sooner. Especially since she has this Lord Doms shredding through the armor that is on the side of the Broncos that has a lot of armor built into their kits right now. Yeah, and now that SSU has that pressure on the bot side with that inhibitor, they're able to split the map here and go top side. And they know they have the Shen ultimate. They know they have the Shen TP. The so it looks like they're looking for an NK on the back line. Caitlyn's going to be getting away. Shen ultimate going to be coming down to the Caitlyn to keep her alive. Uh, Hecarim is now stuck in the back line. Jack looking for something. Not quite going to get it. A huge Seraphine ulti coming back onto the two, uh, three members of Broncos here. Broncos looking for a way to disengage. You've got Hecarim and Jax on the backside trying to get to this Caitlyn. They are able to be able to take out this Caitlyn, but SSU now has plenty of members to just be able to wipe out the rest of their team. And that's going to be an ace for SSU. I think because of the members that are up, I think SSU could look for a potential end here. It might be close cutting. They're definitely going to be able to get a tower in the inhibitor here. Jerbear is actually doing a very smart thing, taking the um, tower here so they can actually have a wave to pressure the tower. And I don't think they're going to be get the end off, but they had a very good fight. The Hecarim went a little too far ahead of his Oriana, and they were able to then ignore the Hecarim and the Jacks in the back line and actually collapse on their back line instead. As the respawns are coming through, SSU might actually overstay here. Yeah, SSU looking for looking for an, a, just an inhibitor tower. They're looking for a Nexus tower just getting out. That Seraphine damage hurting quite a bit on that Tristana. So already these carries on SSU are just so far ahead that it's very difficult for these Broncos to contest them. Uh, SSU is now backing off here. You see the Leona backing on top of Ward. The Seraphine is just backing off a little bit further and wanting to get a little bit more safe. Uh, just clearing wards as she backs out. If she's not careful, she might get caught here. So she's going to have to be very careful on where she recalls. 
looks like she is just going to use the blast point to get over the wall there and is going to be able to back off a little bit more uh with drag coming up in about 50 seconds you have ssu their eyes are set on this dragon right now they are ready to go contest this they are ready to get that soul that that ocean soul which is going to be very big for them with all the, with the sustain they already have from that moonstone seraphine build it's going to be very difficult for the broncos to be able to chunk away at ssu uh when they're able to sustain so well with this ocean soul and it looks like the Broncos are, might make a play for the Baron here. They're going to the top side. You have Hecarim clearing the chickens. If SSU tries to contest this dragon, it might be good for them to try to take Baron. But if they do take Baron, SSU might just melt the dragon and come take them out. So, you know, it, it's very difficult for an outlet for the Broncos right now because they don't really have many options. They have two inhibitors down. They can't risk leaving their base open. So right now they're just trying to wave clear, trying to pick up what they can. And it looks like you've got SSU here sitting in the bush looking for a quick bu uh, bush play. Uh, Seraphine just trying to kite away. You've got Leona coming in now. Going to get a quick stun on the Jax. Jax going to be using his E. That E is going to be down for the team fight. So if something breaks out here, he's not going to have that team wide stun and dodge. Uh, it will be coming up soon once again. So you have all ultimates on the side of Broncos and all ultimates on SSU. So we're going to see a big dragon fight come out here. Watch for the Jarvan R. Yeah, Jarvan R is going to have to be very careful. Jack's going to be hitting the, the stun out of the Seraphine. Big Oriana coming out of three members of SSU. SSU going to be forcing to back off here. Shen Ulti going to be coming in, keeping that Caitlyn alive in the back line. SSU doing a great job of kiting away, trying to keep their carries alive. As they're dry, trying to disengage here, Jack's looking for the back line, not quite going to find it. Jarvan Ulti coming back on the two members, going to be getting both of the carries in the back line, and that's going to be a GG for SSU. Well played by SSU. They were so patient on just waiting for letting the Seraphine do some poke damage, letting they get the DPS out, wait for them to walk in. Jarvan looking for a beautiful engage. You can just see the value Seraphine's providing, giving so much extra shields and heals. And the Shen coming on top, it's too much protection for the Broncos, the Bear, as SSU takes this first game. Yeah, it's very good to see that great game coming out from SSU. And I am very proud of our boys, the Bears, to, and how well they did in this game. And uh, we're looking at a game number two here to see if the SSU can close this out or if we will be moving into a game number three. So we'll be going for a quick break and we'll be back with game number two.
so I go.
Hello and welcome back. We are going into game number two. Looking at these, uh, looking at these picks here, it looks like they're going for a more just kind of pick and poke comp uh, with a grab you, pull you into our team. Uh, how do you feel about these compositions here? Uh, these, uh, this, these draft. How do you feel about that draft? Um, looking at this, the GP pick coming at that um, R five was a little problematic because most of the our GP counters were already picked or banned away. But um, looking at the overall, we thought the Ari was um, a very weak point in their draft because we were kind of scared of the Vigar because we have a more of like wanting to go into them type of comp. And Ari really doesn't have too much AoE pressure. She can go Everfrost to get that into her kit. But looking overall, we do think we have the edge in draft because we have the hyper carry with an enchanter, a good protector with her. And so I feel like we, when the front lines go to clash, I think we're just going to be able to out damage them and be able to push through that Skarner in the Blitzcrank. Because even though they have a lot of pick potential, if we have that Karma around, and as long as we respect the um, Blitzcrank hook or the Skarner R, we should be able to capitalize and help whoever does get hit by that. Because Jinx can get an early QSS. Karma can just play a little further back behind. She doesn't have to worry about hitting that front line, so she can be playing safer. And we can be in a very good spot moving up into this. Yeah, I'm very interested. I'm very interested to see how this is going to play out because it seems like SSU is 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 definitely built a more team fight front to back comp here. They're looking to sustain and looking to catch. They have their mid game carries. They have their late game carries. They know what's coming down. They know what they're prepared to do. Uh, and they see that Blitzcrank, and their their first thought is, hey, we're going to get invaded. So SSU's looking to just stack in a bush here. You know, they're they're waiting. They're, they know that the Blitzcrank is going to look for a, a gank, or they know that they're going to look for something early. And so they're just prepping for that in a stacked bush. But as we can see, it looks like the Broncos aren't really trying to, uh, aren't really trying to push for any sort of invade which is very interesting because typically when you see a blitzcrank you know that the enemy is going to try to invade so it seems like they're trying to throw that off a little bit and they actually are looking to get more of a ward down to scout out where that hecker may be starting but i think i do want to point out is that if jeremy does hug his raptors he could potentially dodge out that ward so that ward could actually be a little bit ineffective if no one's looking over it because it's i think it might not have sight on the raptors and if Jeremy hugs the wall, he can just play around that. And we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll give a little update. But yeah, look at it. We're going to see a standard um, top to bot. We're just going to see him clearing that way. Look to try to pressure those early dragons and look to get the bot lane ahead like he did the last game. Might be a little bit more difficult because Caitlyn does have the stronger like one to three levels than the Jinx does. But Jinx can come back to combat that in the later stages of this lane. Yeah. So he's just going to be looking to relieve a little bit of the pressure. And, and if that Blitzcrank does hit a hook on anyone but the Leona, the Leona is just going to counter engage right on top of that Caitlyn. And there's not really much that the Caitlyn's going to be able to do to counteract that engage. Jinx is just going to follow up, throw down the traps. They're going to lock down that Caitlyn and they're just going to take her out. And there's not much that Blitzcrank can do to counteract that. Uh, as we can see, Karma's just absolutely owning the mid lane right now. With that easy poke damage, the Mantra Q just constantly keeping that pressure up and that poke down, staying healthy as she can be with that W shield. Uh, so she's going to be pushing and have this constant mid lane pressure. So of course, when the junglers get around to the bot side of the map here, you know, and they're trying to contest this scuttle crab, Hecarim's gonna have much more an advantage because bot lane is pushed in. And with bot lane pushed in and mid lane having pressure, he's going to be able to roam here. And as you can see, there's some big, big poke damage coming out from the Blitzcrank, just going to hit a hook on that Leona, which is unfortunately not what they're looking for. They do not want to have that Leona poked down before she can look for an engage. But it's okay, she has pots. She's healing back up slowly. Uh, Caitlyn's trying to just keep her down, uh, keep that poke in. And SSU right now is just playing real safe under the tower. They know their Hecarim's on the bot side of the map. They know that the Skarner is also probably going to be finishing his bot side here shortly, or he's probably top side. Uh, I don't know if the SSU knows. Uh, they know he's bot side because they have they have a ward on the blue buff, so they saw him saw him start on the blue. As they're going to be trying to actually look for it in gank here, but it's probably going to just fizzle out to nothing as Jeremy's going to look to get that bot crap and potentially set for a double crap. But he's most likely going to get forced off because of the nature of the bot lane state right now, and the Ari is the first to move. But it looks like Mitch Fortune's getting a nice quick catch onto the Caitlyn here. Oh, and it looks like Hecarim's going to be 
just trying to run away here. The Blitzcrank hook not going to be falling through because the Ari charm canceled it. The playing against their own teammates in this case, and he just wasn't able to secure the kill there. And so Hecarim was able to get out without any complications. He did unfortunately have to use Ghost in that situation to get out as fast as he possibly could. So that is going to weaken his uh, his next gank here if he tries to look for anything. But if he's just going to push for a level six, he shouldn't have to worry too much about whether or not he has Ghost. Yeah, and because the Blitzcrank lifts the Caitlyn, she actually took a really bad trade into the Jinx, causing the um, SSU side to be able to get some push back into it. Mitch is standing around. They could have looked for a cheater with that giant wave that did crash, but it looks like they're going to try to pressure and force this cannon under the tower and then most likely look for it back after that. Yeah, and of course, once again, the hum the humble gamers is keeping that pressure with the Karma mid here. Just keeping up as much pressure as you can mid right now means that he can control the river. He can go and help out his Hecarim as much as he possibly can. And so that means this Skarner is going to have a bit of a tough time trying to contest these these Scuttle Crabs. And even if he is able to contest these Scuttle Crabs, they're not going to be able to gank in the top lane. Oh, it looks like a gank's coming in the top lane. Hecarim going in on the a gank like here. Gank like going to have to use oranges to get out and is going to be able to walk away here. No summoners used. Uh, but of course, they are going to get a decent gank off there, and Jeremy's just going to be forcing that GP out of lane, and uh, Ergot's going to be getting a good freeze right under tower here. Yeah, a little bit of misplay there by SSU. Jeremy accidentally aimed the GP out of the Ergot. He would, could potentially get a kill. As you can actually see, Blitzcrank has the um, minion dematerializer to try to go for a little bit more cheesy plays with the hook as he tried to do there but then respecting the opportunity that that could happen as we see a trade in the mid lane but humble is unfortunately out of mana actually no he might be able to find the kill here he's looking for that kill the mantra q going to be able to find that kill right under tower with that first blood the karma just having that insane early game damage and poke potential uh with that pressure um, going to be giving them the advantage and that's going to be very big because that means karma is going to be hitting her power spike even sooner now with that extra 400 gold in her pocket she's going to be backing here she's going to be looking to pick up an amp tome she's going to be looking to pick up a tier she's going to be looking to pick up uh any other item that builds into her eventual of course her final build path in this case and that's going to give her that's going to give ssu much more pressure on this dragon here because their mid laner is going to have the advantage to be able to cease uh, to be able to shield and heal their team as they're going to look to contest this dragon here with Hecarim on the bot side of the map. Well, the healing will come a bit later because it does look like he's opting in to go for Staff of Flowing Water first onto this Karma here. It, um, he's going to be looking to pick up that Moonstone in that second slot instead of the first. Just one point out. Ari did not respect the... I guess she forgot that with the Mantra Q on the Karma that the extra range comes out at the end of the Q, which it normally doesn't if it misses. So he should be able to get that good solo kill, be able to get a gold lead. And unlike the previous game with Mitch Fortune getting a 10 CS lead on this Caitlyn, it's actually in the favor of um, Mitch here because he is even on CS. And actually, since he does have the bigger wave, he actually is going to be slightly ahead of this Caitlyn. So that's kind of problematic for the Broncos because they really needed to get this Caitlyn ahead. Yeah, and you can actually see Skarner in the bot lane here looking for a cheeky lane gank, uh, but I don't think he's going to find it, especially if the Blitzcrank can't hit a hook onto uh, any of SSU's members here. Humble Gamer looking for a quick re-engage onto that Ari again, once again punishing her and getting her to half health with just an easy trade in the mid lane. So now she's going to be low as they're now looking to take the Scuttle Crab and probably pressure on Dragon. You have Hecarim on the top side of the map, however, so this Dragon is going to go mostly uncontested. Uh, and I don't think Hecarim's going to be able to get on the bot side of this map, so SSU's just going to go ahead and let this dragon go to the Broncos because they know that they can't really contest this. They have Hecarim on the top side of the map. Uh, they just have Leona going up here to check on the wards to see, um, see, get some vision, see where they're going to be going, and uh, eventually they're going to be looking for future dragons. So it looks like they're going to be looking for an actual dive here on the mid lane. Humble Gamer going to be rooting the Aryan getting out. Uh, Blitzcrank going to flash hook the Humble Gamer back in. Humble going to be trying to get out here. Going to Q again. Going to shield, walk away, but is going to get ignited by the Ari and is going to die. To the yeah, and Humble flashing a little bit early and was able to get hooked by that Blitzcrank with him following up with his flash. And they did burn a lot to try to get that kill. They cut off one of his escape routes with that GP ult. Ari was able to pick up a kill, get a turn, get a little bit more gold back into this lane that she was falling behind in. As you can see, Mitch got, was able to actually pick up two plates in that bot lane though. So the bot lane did get an extra 106 or 320 gold between them as they're going to look to get a nice reset off with the CS lead they have developed. 
Yeah, and, and, and especially with that Jinx starting to hit her strides here and having that CS lead and that gold lead with those tower planes, she's she's going to be looking to get those items over top of the Caitlyn. With these extra recalls she's going to have, she's already got her Noon Quiver, so she's she's going to be having much more damage next time she comes back to lane against this Caitlyn. So SSU can possibly look for fights once they hit, or once the Leona hits six here. Uh, Blitzcrank's not going to really do, be able to do much in terms of you know, fighting, if the Leona gets hooked, the Leona's just gonna go right on top of the Caitlyn and there's not much else they can do. I, I mentioned that earlier. There might be a collapse in the bot lane. Jeremy's going in with the Karma. Jeremy is going into the Karma. Gonna get a nice fear, making that Caitlyn go right back in. And Jinx ulti coming out of nowhere, being able to just take out that Caitlyn and get a big kill on the top of that. And it looks like the Karma is gonna be able to secure a kill onto the Blitzcrank. And that's gonna be bot side pressure map and potentially a first tower for SSU. I don't think they'll be able to get a first tower. I hope they don't take the tower because I would like them to keep it up at this point in the game. I think it might be a too early of a take because they could try to freeze the wave or pull it back and try to still combat them in this lead of a lane they now currently have because of the nature of how it went. Uh, they do have a Rift Herald in the mid lane. Skarner R is going to come down. They're most likely going to... He's pulling him Karma closer to her tower and he, Karma just walks Karma's away. Karma's just going to walk away. He could have pulled Karma down the lane or into the river or just away from her tower, but he pulled Karma right back to where she wanted to be. And it just kept the Karma alive even more. And that's just going to let her get out and it's going to waste the two ultimates, Charm and the Suppression in the mid lane. So now Skarner's not going to have his ulti to look for any ganks in any other lanes at this moment. Yeah, and the just the jungler on the side of the Broncos is having an off day as it seems because he has these high impact ultimates like the previous game. He had the Hecarim ult. This game he has a Skarner ult and they've just been... They've been the, there's been more to desire from them because he could have gotten the easy kill because the Karma is still currently flashless. As Humble's actually going to look to turn onto this Ari now. Going to get some damage off on her with that stun and extra Q. Just going to keep up the pressure with those autos as he's pushing forward. He's got the pots. He's got the shield. He's going to force the Ari ultimate and the charm's going to miss. He's not going to hit the Mantra Q, but he is going to re-engage here with the W. Ooh, and a nice flash coming out from the Ari being able to finish off the Humble Gamer. Uh, and it looks like Blitzcrank's going on the bottom here, but once again, the Scarnet does not have his ultimate. Ari's going to charm the Hecarim into the tower. Hecarim's going to back off here. I don't think he's going to uh, fall to the tower shot, so he is going to be able to pick up a kill. So we've just got fights. The GP all might actually get right die now. here because he did use his ultimate, but it doesn't look like um, that Chase is going to commit to that top lane. As bot lane, the um, with his own flash and ultimate use, he was able to get out. And so across the map, there is a one for one trade in that mid lane, and nothing real has happened besides a Leona burning flash in that bot lane. Yeah, that, that top lane matchup is very difficult for Urgot because the, the Gangplank just has a free note to his ultimate, just a free ca uh, free counter to that Urgot ultimate. So of course we we saw that Arctic Wolf, he could have potentially gone for a kill there, but he knew he didn't want to because even though Gangplank was low on mana, one W could completely ruin his ultimate and it completely, it, it, it becomes useless. So in this case, he's holding onto his ultimate. He's waiting for that Hecarim to come back up top lane. He's waiting for that moment when the Gangplank doesn't have his orange and is able to take him out really easy. Actually, thanks for pointing that out. I did not know that it actually would, it actually, Gameplank Orange removed the ult completely. I thought it just took off the slow. Thanks for um, pointing that out to me, though, because it gives yes, better it analysis there. But as we can see, as stuff's inking out, is that this Caitlyn is actually falling drastically behind this Jinx right now, and that's very problematic for the side because. What they're having, they have this Ari set up. They want this Ari to roam around the map, but she hasn't really roamed. She did get the solo kill in the mid lane, but she solo killed the Karma. Karma's still going to be useful even if she doesn't have, even if she does die and give a, like a kill away. She's going to be more impactful in these fights than this Ari. Chase needs to walk down that top lane because the Essence Reaver is complete on the side of the GP. But they were going to try to snowball dragons with this Caitlyn, and it looks like it's going to get cut off here just because... It, the item is already complete on the side of that Jinx. She already has that Gale Force. Charm is going to go wide, and they're going to look to drop that Rift Herald mid lane. But SSU is looking, looking, looking for a turnaround person. as they SSU go back. SSU looking here. for a turnaround here, but it looks like they're just going to back off. They might just look to clear out this Rift here and not look for anything. Oh, a well, Hook going to be coming out onto the Hecarim. Hecarim going to be getting really low. Going to be forced to ult out to survive. The stun going to be coming off onto the Skarner. Skarner is going to be re-engaged here by Humble Gamer with a Flash W. Ultimate going to be coming out for the Jinx to secure the kill. That's a free dragon for SSU. And on that top side of the map, there was a solo kill as Chase does take out the GP. I'm going to I'm gonna go back real quick so you guys can have a little bit more reference on how he was able to get that kill. Because it kind of looked weird. Um, here, I'll, as they pick up that dragon, let me just go back a little bit. Yeah. 
and, and, and that that was a very good recall by the uh, Urgot there. He saw that his team was winning that bot lane fight, and he knew he didn't need to teleport bot lane, so instead he used his pressure top side to teleport top and completely abused the gangplank uh, with having his flash and just being able to take him out. And as you can see, that fight looks as though GP had used his flash in that fight, and Urgot did not. So that means Urgot is going to have a very big advantage coming into this late game here um, with that extra flash. He's going to be able to look for a flash grab flip uh, coming here. It looks like Skarner is going to be looking for this engage here in the back. Uh, Arctical doing his best to kite away. Teleport coming in from the Karma onto that minion there. Last remaining minion. Karma's going to be stunned, stunned and suppressed right under the tower. I don't think that was the best uh, TP for Karma. A little bit too risky with how close to the tower that was. Yeah, and get that get, they get a nice little pickup kill, get another impact on their scar. Looks like Jeremy's gonna be looking for a pickup kill here onto the gangplank. Gangplank gonna be getting really low and gonna be taken out by the Urgot. That Urgot once again gonna be scaled. His ultimate is coming up here, and it looks like they might re-engage onto this Skarner. Uh Ari's gonna be coming in here, getting a stun charm off onto the Jeremy. Jeremy not gonna be able to get out and is going to fall, unfortunately, to the Ari. Yeah, and I went back to look at that top lane brawl when um, Chase did end up solo killing the game plank, and game plank just didn't respect the E from the um, Ur guy. He just ran in, E'd him under, threw all of his combo out, waited for the orange, and sank the ult into the GP. Actually, predicting the flash with it being a little bit spicy, and got that solo kill. And now Mitch is moving around on this bot lane, picking up more CS, picking up more gold. And similar to how last game, you want to have. In the case of last game, you wanted the Tristana to move around the map to pressure the um, outer towers, take them out. Similar in this game, you want the Caitlyn to also move around to pressure those towers, but she can't because she's fallen so far behind. It's fortunate right now. If you look at the top, you can see there is a 3k gold lead. We're gonna go. Th I'm gonna go through like I normally do and say where the gold lead's at for you at home. And that. Yeah. And while you're looking for that here, that that 3k gold lead is being getting really big, and it's really big because there is two towers for SSU in this case. SSU has the tower advantage, even though they are down in three kills. They still have the tower advantage. They still have those CS advantages. It looks like we're getting another engage here on the bot side. Going to be looking for an engage onto the uh, gangplank. As you can see there, gangplank used oranges, so. The Urgot was not able to finish off the Gangplank with his ultimate, uh, but he was able to finish him off with just his W basic. And with that kill, the Gold League goes a bit, little bit more into favor as SSU as they get another kill, and they look like they're going to turn into a Herald so they can crack out this last remaining outer in the mid lane right now, or rotating their bot lane. And it looks like the Broncos could overextend, but they're going to call me back out. They might, are they going to look for a cheeky hook? No, they're not. Okay, so looking at the gold lead, there is a 1.1k gold lead in that top lane favored into the Urgot. Um, there's even in the mid lane, 300 for Jeremy on that Hecarim. And another, again, a big gap in that bot lane. There's a 1,000 gold lead in that favor of the Jinx in the lane that she should technically be behind in. And since she also has outscaling on the Caitlyn because of how Jinx got buffed, it's very problematic for the Broncos. Yeah, and it looks like the Broncos are going to be trying to get an engage here with that Rift. They're just going to be getting a lot of damage onto this tower. Blitzcrank Cook not going to be able to find a target here uh, as they're just going to be pushing down and keeping pressure on this mid lane. You have Dragon coming up in about a minute 25, so SSU is going to really want to try to crack this inner tower, uh, this, this first tier tower in this mid lane here, and they're going to want to start getting pressure so that they can get even more, um, they can get even more ahead with this Dragon coming up soon uh, and prevent the Broncos from being able to counter engage them. Yeah, and looking, they will be getting that dragon. And like you said, a minute time, everyone gained nice backs off. Let's see if they can pick up items, because a lot of them have a 1, 1,000, 1,200 gold. Actually, everyone across the board has a 1,000 gold to spend on the side of SSU, so they're going to go back to base and spend those items. And as you can see, Chase is actually going for that Ravenous, Hy um, Ravenous Hydra on the Urgot. I'm not sure if that's the bill he goes, because I'm not too familiar after the change to Urgot. They go, actually, they're looking to go in on the bot. Let's crank flashes forward and the hook goes wide. Not and quite gonna find those hooks. His hooks just aren't finding targets this game. And, you know, it, it seems as though that the Blitzcrank is trying to go for the big plays and he's just not being patient. If he was patient and waited for the hooks and he actually took time to read the enemies a little bit he might be able to land a little bit uh, a little bit more hooks in in this game but unfortunately he's just trying to go for these big brand plays thinking he's going to be able to find these 
and SSU knows that he's going to look for those those hooks because SSU has a in a Blitzcrank player on their team. They know how Blitzcrank is played. They are familiar with this champion, so they know how to play against it. So SSU is just playing to their strengths. They know what Blitzcrank is going to do. They're watching his movements. They know what he's going to try. And so SSU is just able to easily back off of any Blitzcrank hooks that are thrown out. And as you can see here, SSU is sitting on top of this dragon, and with Blitzcrank, who is flashless, and not much else being able to, and, and with the Skarner just not able to step up, SSU is just going to be able to secure a free dragon. Yeah, and while we were talking about that, we can see that SSU is taking this nice and slow. They're taking camps, they're choking out the Broncos right now, looking to see, to take out this last hour. Jeremy's actually going to get hooked Jeremy in. Jeremy is going to get hooked in by two people. We're going to get suppressed and pulled all the way into the tower. Not quite going to be able to get out. That's the combo that the Broncos are looking for. However, I don't think that's the combo they should be looking for every single time. Because if they look for that combo all the time, they're going to constantly put themselves at disadvantage without the Skarner ult, without that Blitzkrank ult. Blitzkrank ult going to be pulling onto that the Karma. Karma going to be getting out there just in time. Not going to be survived. Uh, all of the teams getting really low here. Jinx ultimate going to be coming out. Jinx gonna flash. Getting excited. Oh, gonna get excited. Gonna be looking to kite down this this Caitlyn here. Gonna be able to take that out. Without that suppression, there's no way they can stop that Jinx from just kiting away from the team here and just taking him out one by one. As you can see, Jinx getting as far as the head as she's got. The Caitlyn's not putting out that same DPS. And that was a three. I'm gonna call that a three, four and a half because the GP ult did come down and actually it looks like Chase once again ended up killing that GP in the top lane. He wasn't looking forward to this matchup, but right now he's killing it up there in that top lane. And as you see, SSU wins a three V four and a half and is starting to now just take over the game from here with their comp that does outscale the size of the Broncos. Yes, this front to back composition that SSU completely drafted and they knew what they were getting into when they were drafting this. They planned this out. They knew they needed a front to back comp. They knew they needed some of the early game champions that they had. They needed some of those mid game carries. And now that they have the Karma here now hitting her late game power strides with the Moonstaff build and, you know, with that Hecarim now being as tanky as he is, they don't care if the Hecarim gets hooked. All he needs to do is be able to hit an ultimate on the on the enemy team or just to be able to distract enough damage. Because if they waste if they waste the Skarner ulti, if they waste the charm, if they waste the hook, that's all of Broncos CC. They have nothing else. And so if they waste all of that long range single target CC, SSU is going to be able to clap back with that team wide CC and easily be able to take out those individual members with that Jinx just getting excited with her passive and just taking them out one by one, slowly whittling them away. Yeah, and I want to just like look at the damage composition on the sides of each team. That yes, Caitlyn is going to be autoing a lot, but she's not going to be autoing as fast as a Jinx, who has this minigun, who has this get excited that increases her attack speed. She has attack speed steroids in her kit, so the DPS values are also in the favor of that over time SSU is just going to put so much more damage into the fight than the side of the Broncos, who have an Ari, who have the Skarner. They're looking to try to just do quick burst and try to win advantages over in that department just by just out sustaining. But they have a Karma. They have a Karma who's just going to shield whoever the Ari tries to poke out. They're just going to shield whoever the G or the Caitlyn's going to throw um, a headshot on. And that's where SSU is just going to take over the game because they have counters to the damage of the Broncos. Yeah, they also have a lot of sustain too within their kits. You know, it's not a lot as, you know, a Vladimir might have, but it's definitely enough to the point where you have plenty of healing. And as you can see here, SSU is not afraid to start this Baron. They know that the single target CC that Broncos has to offer is very limited. And so that they know if they take this Baron the here, GP's they can the the is going to die in the bot lane here. He is going to, there's the orange on that ultimate, but he is going to unfortunately still fall to the Urgot. Looks like the engage in the top side going in here. Big ultimate coming out of the back line, pushing the Caitlyn into the full team. Caitlyn going to be flashed to flash out. Leona going into the back line, stunning out the Skarner. Skarner going to be trying to re-engage here. Jeremy going onto that Caitlyn. Caitlyn all alone on her, on her own in this top side here. The Ari is going to be able to find a kill on Leona. Not quite going to fall. All of Broncos is very, very low right now. And it looks like the Karma is going to be re-engaging here. It looks like the Ari is looking for a kill. Not quite going to find the kill on Humble with that shield. And now Jeremy's just going to be chasing down this... Uh, this the Blitzcrank, I, my mind is blown. This is just, that was an amazing fight by SSU. That was a very good job by SSU being able to control that as best they could and taking what they had in that 5v4 situation and being able to turn that around and even get an inhibitor out that with that Urgot pushing in the side lane. Yeah, and with um, that Urgot taking on that GP in that side lane, make, is making it so GP could not ult in that fight, giving SSU more room to maneuver. They don't have to worry about GP ult in their back line and Skarner trying to find someone there. 
They dropped a lot of people super low. Mitch now is with that last whisper completely giving him a little bit more shred. He's going to be probably able to get those kills now in these next fights to get the excited passive off and just go off completely. Because as you can see, is that even though the Jinx did get or get taken out early, they don't have the damage to get through the rest of the front line and the members of SSU. And they also didn't clear sideways before pressuring to compete for that Baron. And SSU had chased TP and take that top in him. And he is now currently pressuring and SSU's trying to SSU's gonna be getting there. that stun down on the Skarner, gonna be pushing right back to the team. The Blitzcrank hook gonna be coming out on the Leona. Leona gonna be charmed in the back line. Leona is gonna fall here, but not before she gets an ulti off. A nice mantra cube coming in from the side on the on the humble gamer there. Uh, looking for another Q onto the enemy team. So they're Chase now in the back line. One for one. It looks like he is in the back line. Going to be getting them off. Going to get the ulti off on the Skarner. Skarner going to be getting low. Ultimate going to come off on the Urgot. Urgot going to flash fear. The Blitzcrank away from the team. Jinx going to be hitting that W on. Jinx going to be getting that kill right with that auto at the max auto range across that uh, wall. And it looks like SSU is going to be able to back off here and get this free dragon. Jeremy using the expert strats being able to dash right over the wall on top of the ward. Uh, that's an impressive thing. I have never seen that before. Uh, and but Jake I, Rocket's coming through over the wall too. They don't. They don't even have to go in the pit to take out this dragon. They're just gonna kill it from over the wall. Absolutely. And they're gonna pick up a third Drake. And I just want to talk about the damage compositions right now because I was talking about that earlier. And these two mountain Drakes on the side of Broncos, none of them. They do have the uh, Lord Doms on the side of the Caitlyn, but she's not autoing like I said before as consistently as this Jinx would be. Or this thing of like a Tristana or a champion of that nature. Ari, she's burst. She doesn't build too much pen besides those Sork pen boots. She's not going to be able to get through this extra resistance. Same with GP, who's in this Lethality build. He's That Lethality is going to get cut off by the extra resistances from this Mountain Drake. And SSU is just going to get so much more bulky than they were before that these Karma Shields get more value because they have more resistances. And just their entire comp in general just benefits so heavily from this Mountain Dragon. Yeah, another thing that benefits for SSU too is that the champions that SSU are building typically build items that counteract burst damage. You've got the Steric's Gauge on the Urgot. It As they like might get another in going in here, but it looks like Jeremy's gonna get really low, gonna be pulled back into the fray here. Leon Ulti coming back out of three members. It looks like he's in the middle of it. Ultimate gonna be coming off for Arctic Wolf, gonna be able to fear three people away. It looks like you have Jinx in the back line being able to cat away. Urgot going onto the gangplank here, gonna be trying to take them low. Caitlyn, Ari, off to the side, trying to back off and just get away from this as SSU is going to be pushing this out. Arctic Wolf still going ham, not quite going to be able to find the kill, but the Caitlyn is going to get very, very low. You have Mitch Fortune coming in the side here, just going to be pushing in the side lane. He's got the super minions here. He can try to pressure these in it, these these Nexus Towers. I thought Arctic Wolf was going to actually look there and get that quadra kill and maybe potentially a Pentum off the trap reset. And I, just, I don't know what happened with the Jinx and Karma, but it did look like they wanted to chase, so there's a little slight communication gap there because... Um, Chase wanted to keep on going in. It looked like Humble and uh, Mitch wanted to peel off and go for this Baron that was up. And as they're going to start right now, Karma Shield and all, wait for the Leona and Hecarim to come in. But the Broncos are going to want to challenge this Baron because these two members are very low. And it looks like they're actually probably just going to have to back up as the resets do come through. And now they might have to worry about of the Broncos starting up, but I don't think the Broncos will because they don't have the damage to go through it. They they definitely do not have the damage, and it would be a major risk for them because even if they try to start this up, the Hecarim has such a very high smite priority right now with his ultimate being able to dive in on this Skarner. Even if Skarner tries to ult him away while, while Hecarim's ulting in, if he times it right, the Hecarim will be completely untargetable throughout his ultimate. Or not untargetable, but uh, unsuppressible by the Skarner ultimate, and he should be able to steal that away if the Broncos did start it, of course. But they didn't. And so now you see SSU here just trying to gain this vision control back as they're now keeping pressure on this Baron. They know that they have the pressure on this Baron. They have the teleport up on the Urgot. They know that the Urgot can push this side lane. They know that the Urgot can easily 1v1 the Gangplank. So they're just going to continue letting this Urgot push these side lanes here and get this pressure. And knowing that he has that side lane pressure, SSU's going to start up this Baron. They're going to start up this Baron. They have the vision control. They know where the Broncos are right now. The Broncos are trying their best to find SSU and pull them out. The Gangplank ulti coming in here. Skarner going to the back line. Going to be able to pull a Leona. Not quite going to find a kill. Jeremy going on the back line here. Blitzcrank in the in the middle of the fray. Going to get really, really low here in the back. Jeremy going to get pulled to the back line with the Skarner ulti. Not quite going to find a kill. Arctic Wolf getting that ultimate off onto the Caitlyn. Jinx getting excited. Just popping out that damage from the back line with those rockets. Going to be able to get another kill onto the Skarner. Going to be chasing down for more kills here. Going to hit the W onto the Ari. Ari charm. Going to miss here. Jinx going to hit another W onto the 
onto the Ari. Ari getting once to let me low. This giant rocket's coming out, just doing tons of damage. And you now have more inhibitor pressure, and this might be a game for SSU. And this is probably going to be the game because GP doesn't have too much to defend against the three remaining members of SSU. He has his barrel. He missed the combo. TP in to keep it up, but Blitzcrank is respawned. Caitlyn's almost up, so if SSU doesn't hit away at these towers, they could try to put up a defense. And it, it does it, SSU looks split on it whether they're commit or not, though. SSU trying their best to just take out these towers here. They have the members. Uh, they have members coming up soon. Jinx getting excited, trying to get away. Not quite going to be able to get away in time. GP going to be able to take him out. Going to fall low and die. Arctic Wolf just popping off in this backline with his major damage, getting a double kill. And now he's going to be focusing the Nexus here. He's just going to be autoing this here. Suppression going to be coming out onto the Karma, but Karma going to stay alive with them shields. And it looks like Arctic Wolf is going to be able to finish off this game. Oh no, you've got Ari coming in here looking for a kill onto the Karma. Game not quite finished as you have Urgot now just kiting away, looking for another kill. And that's going to be an ace and a game for SSU. And SSU takes their better comp that they got an actual lead on. They slowly just outwhittled the side of the Broncos, and the horse could not run far enough away from the bear as SSU takes that second game and takes the series 2-0. That was a very exciting pair of games there. SSU just took those advantages they got in those side lanes. They took those advantages they got in the jungle. They took those small advantages and CS leads and gold leads where they could. They got those early towers, and they just continued to steamroll this game and choked out the Broncos and, of course, the Bears win in the Bears vs. Broncos. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, we will we will be back with an interview. Uh, we'll be interviewing one of SSU's players here shortly, and uh, we will see you in just a moment. So we'll be back after a short break. I grew up making games, so I wanted to make a career out of that. Shunny being a small school is the thing that drew me to it. Shunny is nationally ranked in the Princeton list for game design. A lot of the professors own their own businesses. That kind of prompted me to start my own business. I started a game studio. I don't think that would have been possible if the school were bigger, and Shunny put that all together for me. I'm Dalton, and I invite you to discover Shawnee State University for yourself. Please visit discover.shawnee.edu.
All right, welcome back to the interview with four of the five members of the SSU team who just made it to the top eight for the Timo Cup currently. We got Jer Bear in the jungle. We got Arctic Wolf in the top lane. Got Zilla Flip, the support, and we have Mitch Fortune on AD Carry with us today. And what is your overall opinion on the game thus far in the Timo Cup, guys? I'm ready for pizza. Ready for the pizza, okay. <laughs> Um, I mean, good competition so far, uh, but good outcome. Did we drop the game yet? In the end, I think we could really chalk it up to our drafting. It's been pretty... In the end, I think somebody should get a pentakill and not int it away. Sorry. Report has been filed. I'm sorry. Right. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> hey, 
we get close to those pentakills. Has anyone gotten a pentakill so far this season? I think did Mitch get one, or Mitch, have we not gotten one yet? Mitch probably got one. Um, I think he always I gets one. I don't know. If we All put right, him so on the vein. So we're looking at the game so far and how everything's shaped up in the season. How do you guys feel going into the final weeks of the season? Because this is the first time you, uh, the four of you guys, Humble's not here right now, have gotten this far in the Teemo Cup making the top eight. How are you guys feeling right now? I'm feeling go Bears. I'm feeling like we're going to win the whole freaking thing. Okay. <laughs> got the confidence. Have yeah. we dropped the game? We haven't dropped the, the game Teemo in Teemo Cup, Cup no. no. Nope. Uh, yeah, feeling spicy. I mean, next matchup is going to be the the new big one, but I think we can, I think we can win, even if we face the team that we lost to in the regular season. So we yeah, just gave him, not... gave him some false confidence for sure. <laughs> mm. Now Chase, got out. Mm -hmm. you are the freshman top laner here in this full senior lineup. How are you feeling with that pop off game you had on the Urgot? You went like fourteen one nine. Pretty sure you're one of the highest KDAs in our side of the bracket right now. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I was very excited for this game. Uh, starting off, not so hot because Gangplank uh, usually does way better into Urgot, so I was very worried. Then I just got that first solo kill and it just snowballed off uh, snowballed uh, after that. So it felt very nice to actually have a good pop off game. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How's the how's the team chemistry feeling so far? Because we haven't had this many people on the mic. So I want to get more of like input on like just how the team's feeling as a whole with how everyone's playing with each other. Since this is the, going to be the last season for majority of you here. Mm. My team, they uh, they Watch suck. <laughs> oh, Jeremy, okay, Jeremy, so throwing out the flame there. Well, I just like to get off my chest. Way. That's, that's, go ahead, Jake. I would just like to get off my chest that Jeremy's a doubter in the SSU invades, and it's just putting down the team morale and the team chemistry when we just love to get an advantage. And then Jeremy's just like, I'd rather go do a bluff. I'm like, dude, be a real man and invade. Yeah, Jeremy, we, we, you, Jeremy if you value. If you value your uh, jungle camps, I'd be careful. Oh, okay. Uh, are you threatening me with taking my jungle here? <laughs> yeah, that or a nice blast cone. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> not again. Oh, no, we're not going to talk about that blast cone. <laughs> not again. <laughs> no. Ugh. All right. As you can see, the team chemistry is high and mighty right now. What do you guys want to say to the fans? Everyone has been with you this whole season and with you for your last couple years with SSU. What do you guys want to say to them? Um... Hoggers. Um, well, th yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, your support is amazing. Uh, at, like watching back at the like Twitch chat, um, like after games, uh, feels very nice. The Arctic Whale does indeed looking at Twitch chat. He loves it. Mm, mm, that's true. I mean, it's nice to see the Twitch chatters and uh, some of the alumni that still watch. I think that's really cool. Appreciate it. And shout out the new fan, Kaibet. Kaibet. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Having a coach has been really beautiful those the last uh, couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you can see there, everyone's lighthearted spirits as they move into the top eight of their section of the Teemo Cup. Everyone here, they're doing good. And that is going to be the SSU Bears signing off for today. Go Bears. Go Bears. Bye. Oh, OSI. <laughs> <laughs>